I started this build like many others. I hurt myself in some way. Typically I'll just stand on the bathroom scale or something. I couldn't figure out what I was going to build, but then it hit me. The first thing that I had to do was find out as much as I could about the reflex hammer. I really didn't know how it was put together, so I just kind of fiddled with it. I took it apart. I realized there was a pin that went through the head and through the body part of it. Uh, so I pulled that out. I had to get the design down, so I traced it out on a piece of walnut using a white pencil. I cut it out as close as I could to the line on my bandsaw. I do my best to always push objects through as far away from my fingers as possible. I've seen a couple of pretty gory images and I don't want that to be me. I also traced the outside of the head, the ring, I guess you could call it, and cut that out off camera. I used the belt sander to shape the body of the handle to the best of my ability. However, there were a couple of spots that I couldn't quite reach, uh, even with the belt sander. Uh, and I don't have an oscillating spindle sander or a spindle sander of any kind, so I used this block so I could get down to the line. I realized that it was a little bit too fat, like me, and I decided to cut it in half. I had to get rid of the bandsaw marks on the head and on the body, so I used a big block of wood that I've got a bunch of sandpaper on and sanded off the bandsaw marks. I've never really used gouges before. Um, I'm not very good at it, just like a whole lot of other things, but just kind of figured it out. I just worked on it and worked on it until I felt comfortable enough to simply just gouge out the center. I had to use a drill bit to make the head into a ring and this was um, very scary. Uh, these were really really fragile pieces. Uh, I ended up using a half inch Forstner bit and I decided to glue these really thin pieces down uh, using some double sided tape, super glue and activator. Uh, to a waste board so that way I wouldn't get blowout on the back end of the pieces. Uh, they were really fragile. This was the scariest part of the build. Uh, I was definitely holding my breath as much as possible and uh, it was very nerve-wracking drilling into these things but luckily I didn't have a single issue and uh, they turned out pretty good. I used a flat gouge to wedge in between the pieces of tape to be able to get them off of the waste board. Uh, it worked pretty well. Using a really sharp chisel, I had to get rid of the excess wood on the inside of the ring. Uh, I made sure to flip the piece over and go from both sides uh, to prevent tear out on the other side or misshaping. And as you can see, I've been making two of each of these because I did not trust myself enough to be able to make one perfect. Uh, I luckily did not have to use the second one, but it seems to be good. I decided to put a long taper on the handle to the ring and uh, that I thought that was probably going to be the best avenue for 
getting that to be lined up and strong enough that it would hold. Uh, it's not going to have a whole lot of force on it, but that would probably be the best. Uh, I used a saw, and I don't really know why I didn't tape this down to my workbench. Um, it probably would have been a really good idea, uh, considering how fragile this piece is. Uh, I probably could have used my bandsaw too, uh, as long as I had some kind of uh, backer underneath the blade. Uh, but I got through it, and I have no idea how I didn't destroy this thing. But I cut through it, and it didn't break, so that's great. Oh, look. It didn't line up. <laughs> so I had to refine the edge using some sandpaper. A little bit better. I uh, made a couple of white marks on the handle and on the head so that way I could make sure that everything was aligned and it was the right size. Um, with a taper like this you could easily have this misaligned and it wouldn't work very well. Um, I put some glue on and pushed it into the fibers uh, and then had to apply just a little bit of extra glue uh, that didn't get soaked in. Um, I put the tape there basically just as uh, a way to hold it in place for just a little bit. Then I put tape on the other side and had to make sure that everything was aligned properly on all the axes. Uh, spreading the tape apart uh, so I could look and observe, I taped it and clamped it down with uh, my spring clamp. Now's the time for the actual reflex hammer head. Um, I used this piece of Niovi that I had. Uh, it's an exotic wood from Central America and it is just gorgeous. It's got this beautiful orange color and I made sure to uh, use a piece with some sapwood on it. Just like the handle before, it was just a little bit too fat like me and uh, so I decided to cut it down with my table saw using a piece of walnut as a spacer. Uh, I glued it to that so my hand would be pretty far away from the blade. I probably should have had some kind of backer piece on this uh, just to prevent it from moving and kick back, but uh, it turned out okay. I took some really light passes as you can see here. Uh, I only took off about a sixteenth of an inch at a time uh, until I got it as thick as I wanted. But I'm kind of stupid and I cut off all of my drawings so I had to put that back on. And uh, just like everything else, why make one when you can make several? Uh, lots of sanding, lots of bandsaw, but that's it. Alright, now that our reflex hammer is finally done, we're going to be finishing. And I have decided to do a three-part mixture. It's oil-based polyurethane, a mineral spirits, and linseed oil. I actually got the idea from David Picciuto from Make Something, so make sure to check him out as well. This is our reflex hammer handle. Uh, it is incredibly tiny and very fragile, so we're going to apply lots of coats to this, very, very light coats. Um, this is the hammer's head, and it's actually made out of Niovi, which is an exotic wood. Very cool looking. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to make our finish. And I don't need very much because this is obviously a pretty small thing, so I'm just going to make a very small amount. I'm going to suck up one milliliter of boiled linseed oil. And... This is polyurethane. This is oil based. So, again, and we're going to put that in there too. Alright, and then we're going to 
do mineral spirits. And this, I don't really need to measure out because it's just going to be a couple of drops. We're just going to really thin it out so it really doesn't matter too much. Just something like that. And stir. Suck this into the dropper so we can get what we left. And it should be a really thin consistency. It should move like water. That's what we want. The thinner, the better in this particular case. Like that. All right. Now, clean rag. And we're just going to soak up some of it and apply it just like that. And look how beautiful that looks. You can see that beautiful orange of the Niobe. Sorry about my sound. Uh, it got messed up and I lost a lot of my audio. I'm very excited about the walnut, how that turned out. Um, even though these are made out of two pieces, uh, you can barely tell that transition. So I am very, very pleased with how this turned out. Thank you so much for watching. It really does mean a lot to me. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you have any questions, feel free to place a comment below. Don't procrastinate. Innovate. Catch you on the next one.